Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with green quinoa tabbouleh. That's right, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of quinoa, and I've never really liked tabbouleh that much. So the fact that I love this as much as I did really came as quite a surprise. In fact, I'm going to make the prediction that if you try this, it may and probably will become one of your new favorite cold side dishes. And we haven't even mentioned how much healthier this is, which I probably will later. But for now, let's just go ahead and get started. And we'll begin by prepping our herbs. And I'm going to be using three of them, starting with two large bunches of parsley. And as you may have noticed, we're going to use the curly variety for this recipe, which has a little more of a subtle flavor and softer texture. And then besides the parsley, we'll also go with some fresh mint. And then last but not least, one of my all-time favorite herbs, tarragon, which always provides a beautiful, sweet, aromatic note to whatever it's used in. And then what we'll want to do after we've washed and picked out most of the stems is to take approximately half of these herbs and briefly blanch them in some boiling water to lock in that green color. And no measuring, just go by eye. And what we'll do is transfer those into some plain boiling water, next to which we have a big bowl of ice cold water. And we are literally only going to give these things a few seconds. All right, pretty much as fast as we can transfer them in and give them one quick stir. And we'll see that color turn to a bright green. As soon as that happens, we will quickly transfer those into the ice water, where we'll let them sit for a few minutes until they're cool completely. At which point we will drain that very well, and then squeeze out all the excess water. At which point we will transfer that into a blender, in which we're going to eventually make our dressing. But not yet, because we're going to do that while our quinoa is cooking, which is the next step. And of course, before we cook our quinoa, we got to rinse it off. So we'll take a couple cups of white quinoa, and rinse that under cold water for a minute or two. And then what we'll do once that's rinsed is head back to the water that we blanched the herbs. And we will want to bring that back to a boil. And what we'll do is add a spoon of salt to that, as well as our rinsed quinoa. And we will give that a stir and adjust our heat to about medium. Because what we want to do is simmer this for about 12 minutes or so until that quinoa is just barely tender. Okay, so we'll let that cook. And while it does, we can take care of some other prep. For example, we can go ahead and chop up the rest of the herbs. And other than use a sharp knife, I really don't have any tips here. Except for maybe don't chop these herbs too fine. All right, tabbouleh is, first and foremost, an herb salad. So we definitely want to feel and see this stuff. So I don't think we want these herbs too, too fine. So I'm going to stop right about here. And then the other thing we can probably do while our quinoa is cooking is make our dressing. And for that, we'll add a few peeled garlic cloves to our blanched herbs as well as the freshly squeezed juice from two lemons. And by the way, this stuff's just for starters. We're almost always going to add more of these ingredients later. And then we'll finish this off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And that's it, a very basic, simple dressing that we'll take over and blend until very smooth. And as usual, we'll start slow, pulsing on and off, stopping and scraping the sides if necessary. And then eventually we will crank it up and finish on high speed until we have something very, very smooth and very green. And that's it, we'll turn that off. And by now, hopefully our quinoa is cooked. And if it is, and mine was, we'll remove that from the heat, and of course drain it. But do not rinse it. All right, we'll just let it sit in the strainer for at least five minutes, draining thoroughly, giving it the occasional toss with this spoon, which is not only gonna help it drain, but also release a lot of that heat. And then what we'll do after about five minutes or so, when we're sure that's thoroughly drained, is transferred into a big mixing bowl where we're going to want to let it continue to cool down to somewhere between warm and room temperature. But while we wait, we can go ahead and season this up, which I'm going to do with a giant pinch of kosher salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, and a little bee of the sea, which is Food Wishes shorthand for a little bit of cayenne. And then assuming our quinoa has cooled down somewhere between room temp and warm, we can go ahead and pour in our dressing and give this all a thorough mixing. And by the way, I should mention, I'm using the white quinoa because I think it makes for the best appearance here, since it's really gonna absorb and hold on to that green color. But if you're not overly concerned with appearance, you can, if you want, use the rainbow variety or red quinoa, which apparently is even more nutritious. Okay, so if you wanna use a different variety, go ahead. I mean, you guys are after all the Margaret Meads of your edible bird seeds. But since I'm calling this green quinoa tabbouleh, I'm definitely going with the white. But anyway, we'll go ahead and give that a mix. And then what we'll do if it's not already is let this cool all the way down to room temp 
before adding and stirring in our chopped herbs. All right, don't do this if the mixture is still a little bit warm, but if it's room temp like mine is here, you're safe. And we'll go ahead and give that a mix. And if we want, we could taste it. But that's not gonna be very useful. Because to finish this salad, what we really need to do is wrap it up and pop it in the fridge for a few hours to let everything sort of meld together. At which point we can pull it out and do our final seasoning adjustments. So that's what I'm gonna do, and did. And this is what mine looked like two hours later. And we'll go ahead and give that a taste to see where we're at. And roughly 100% of the time, it's gonna need more stuff. Like usually some of everything. So I gave mine a little sampling and decided it needed some more salt and freshly ground black pepper and cayenne and lemon juice. And that's it. Just kidding. And olive oil. And what we'll do once all that's been added is give it a very thorough mixing and another taste. And we will keep adjusting until we determine it's perfect. Whatever that means. And I should mention, this is just the basic tabbouleh base. And at this point, you could accessorize this with all kinds of things, like diced tomato or cucumber or green onions. Or maybe you have some leftover grilled vegetables you want to chop up and toss in here with a handful of feta. There are just so many delicious places you can go from here. But for whatever reason, I do like to keep mine very simple. And then what we'll do once we've added everything we're going to add, and we're happy with the seasoning, is transfer that into something a little more attractive. And maybe finish off the top with a little more of our herb trio. And that's it. What I'm calling green quinoa tabbouleh is done. So let me grab a fork and go in for the official taste. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a huge tabbouleh fan. And I think that's because of the bulgur wheat. I guess I'm just not a bulgur bro. But here with the smaller, more subtly flavored quinoa, I'm actually a huge fan. Not to mention, from what I hear, this stuff is way better for you than wheat. All right, I would tell you about the protein content and all the amino acids, but I don't want to sound like one of those dorks on TV. But as usual, the real main reason you should make this is because of how good it tastes. It really is so fresh and vibrant, and for me, the perfect summer side dish. Oh, and then there's one last thing I want to show you here before we finish. This green quinoa tabbouleh you see me spooning into this bowl was made four days ago. And because we blanched those herbs for the dressing, it still has the exact same beautiful green appearance as it did the day we made it. So in case you're wondering why we did that extra step, that's why. And I went ahead and topped that with some fried andouille and some green onions to create what the kids are calling, hold on, I wrote this down, an ancient grain bowl. Ooh, sounds so hip. Which reminds me, I would pair this with any beverage that comes in a mason jar. And believe it or not, even four days later, in addition to retaining that beautiful color, it also still tastes very fresh and vibrant, and virtually identical to when it was made. So if you're looking for a beautiful and different and delicious side dish you can make way ahead, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.